Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. I am uh, in an airport, but also I am Pastor Goodman, the content executive for Higher Things. Joining me today is El Presidente, Pastor Wayne Bomsch. How are you, sir? Doing fantastic. And yourself? Not too bad. Uh, it's uh, good to be in an airport and not cover my whole face. Uh, it's, it's, it's free. Yeah. Uh, so it's also it's into news. the resurrection of our Lord. And so it's just a joyful season all around. We're moving into Easter too. And uh, I know it tends to be sort of that, that low season. We just got, we, we did a lot of church, but you should still go to church on Sunday. What are you going to see in church on Sunday? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. We, we spend uh, like Holy Week and, and, and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday kind of pack so much stuff into those, those uh, that, in, into Holy Weekend and the Triduum, as we called it. Uh, but then um, now we get a little, you know, Easter too is always called Low Sunday, right? It's, it's not, as fest and not as festive, not as much going on. Um, it's a little less, less intense. Um, but then, you know, we kind of plug along until we get to Pentecost, which is the next big festival 50 days after Easter. Uh, so what do we do on Sunday after the great big feast and then waiting for the next big feast? Uh, one thing that you'll notice is there's no Old Testament reading. Um, it's like we shelve the Alleluia's during Lent. Uh, we shelve the Old Testament during the Easter season. And especially this year, if you're on a three-year series, Series C, which normally series A is Matthew, series B is Mark, series C is Luke, except for the Easter season, uh, we have gospels uh, only from the gospel of John. And almost like, so for the next three Sundays specifically, not this Sunday, but following, um, we're, no, 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 take, I gotta take that back again. This Sunday and next are, are specific stories, but then we go all the way back to the upper room to, uh, to Holy Thursday and the high priestly prayer and all of that kind of stuff gets looked at farther down in the Easter season. Um, but <clears throat> our epistle lesson goes away no Pauline epistles. We're looking specifically at Revelation. So we have Acts in place of the Old Testament. We've got Revelation in place of the epistles and all Gospels from John. And what this is doing is it's it's showing us kind of the the sort of the ripple effect of the resurrection. How is the church responding? How are the disciples responding to the resurrection and and to the ascension? with the readings from Acts, the readings from the Revelation are showing us um, the future, the far future. What do we have to look forward to? What does all of this mean? Jesus is risen. He has risen, alleluia. Uh, but what? But so what? Well, look at what the future is going to be. And then, so you've got the disciples and the apostles and the believers spreading the gospel. You've got the looking at the future, where that is, and then you're coming back and the focusing on the words of Jesus uh, in, in our gospel readings. It's a really important thing, too, because, I mean, the, the resurrections, I mean, we, we worked all the way through Lent, and we have it, and now it's just, you look at it, and you're like, so what? I mean, I still have all the same sins, all the same problems, all the same burdens, the devil, the, the same last great enemy, death. What does this mean like it's a really good catechism question so you're saying and especially in the three year you almost get a, a catechism answer right because and you look at what's what's happening in there you know you've got um um acts acts five is coming up you got you know peter and john this thing going on you've got um uh you've got the call of 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 saul that whole that whole narrative is is one reading coming up um, you've got Paul in, in Philippi. Uh, so you've got, <clears throat> and so you've just sort of got this idea that you, you've got Paul, this murderous person, this, this horrible sinner. It's like, how could anybody want to spend any time getting anywhere close to this guy? And what happens? The Lord himself says, even you who, who approved of Stephen being martyred and murdered, even you are worthy of salvation. Even my blood covers even your sin. So, but you're going to come and tell people about Jesus. You're going to tell people about me so that they too may believe. Um, yeah, it is, it is a wonderful thing that, that 
Right. This, this is how much the Lord loves us and how much, what the resurrection is for. The timing of it seems magnified too, because I mean, if you think about it, Paul, of all the people who, who saw it in those days, being a, a, a good little Pharisee would have been in Jerusalem for the Passover, right? Right. Mm -hmm. If he was in a high standing, like he claims to be, he probably would have very much, if, if not been witness to the crucifixion, but an active part in it. Uh, this is this is actually somebody convicted by Peter's Pentecost sermon. You who crucified Jesus, uh, not just by me and my sins, but but him actually being one of the ones to to call for the death of Jesus, to then call for that death to actually mean something for all the world, call for that to radiate forgiveness, not only to himself, but to, to all the world. This is really important timing for this that I got to think. Yes, absolutely. It's, it, it's the very heart of everything that we do. Um, you know, again, you know, the, the resurrection seems so, it seems so ethereal and so ephemeral it's you know it was then you know kind of a thing you know, here, you know our bulletin cover for this sunday you know we've got because you know it's john right so we've got jesus appearing thomas you know touching the <laughs> touching the wounds and kind of a thing and so okay well that was fine that was then uh so what does this all mean now and you know and so here these accounts kind of help help frame what the gospel is for us now and to eternity. And the promise, uh, you know, all the readings from Revelation, you know, they're, they're towards, um, we start at the beginning of Revelation now, and we finish up at the end of Revelation, we're kind of hitting, we're hitting the good parts, you know, none of the scary stuff, none of the doom and gloom, uh, but, you know, the river of life and the promise I'm coming soon, all of that is, is bookends on the end, and we've got all the Acts readings here telling us, you know, th this gospel is for the world. It is to go out. So this, this resurrection is for you. This forgiveness is for you. This Jesus is for you. Uh, and so that's kind of like hammered home each week. Again, that, you know, we spent all this time in Lent worrying about our sin and repenting of our sin and reflecting on our sin. Um, but we should have also been reminded that that sin is forgiven each Sunday. Um, and now it's kind of like it's coming at us. Um, reverberating the, those echoes of alleluia that kind of went out, you know, they're kind of coming back to us and reminding us in our, in our ears through the, the readings of, of God's word that this, this very promise is for you. That's fantastic because it's, it's not just about, you know, how sad can you make yourself in Lent or Easter somehow removing all of your problems or all of your, your sad, it, it, the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation run there. And it is for you, like you said, that's a great reason to go to church, even if you went on Easter. Thanks so much for joining us, Pastor. Absolutely. My pleasure. Have a great one. You too.